Okay, now I want to look at one of the worst ones that I've found, and I probably have close to about a hundred of these new Bible perversions, as I call them. But this one here is just really, really, really evil. I'm going to show it to you. It's the True Images Bible, Teenage Girl Bible. So let's take a look at this one. Let's start out by pointing out charm bracelet. I don't have time to get it get into that too much here, but it says the only NIV Bible specifically for teen girls ages 13 to 16. And look at the propaganda here. NIV most read, most trusted. Did they ask you if it's the most read, most trusted? That's secular advertising. But now let's look at some of the things in here. Okay. You aren't going to believe some of the stuff in this thing. Just call me chameleon. Okay. Here she says, you don't like to drink? Come on. You'd never guess if it if you saw me at a party. I'm the one they count on to make them laugh when I start drinking. Okay? But every time I stumble home trying not to vomit or worse, wake up my parents. Every time I wake up with a splitting headache, I wonder who I was with last night. I really don't like going to church. Now, what they do over and over and over again in this corrupt Bible version is they will put in here a profile. And what it's designed to do is it's designed to show a teenage girl who's having a certain problem and then they give you the advice down here how to get fixed up. The only problem with this is if you know anything at all about teenagers and all of us have been teenagers at one point in time, teenagers are influenced by peer pressure. So guess which one they're going to listen to? Up here. Here they can find a teenager that's going through the same things, that has the same rebellious issues that they do. So they can find justification for their sin. And that's exactly what teenagers will do. Okay. Here we have casual or not. Look at this one. But the story is that she had, there you go, with a guy friend of ours last night, or I'm sorry, last week, just for fun. Now, do you want your 13-year-old daughter reading that? And how about this one, if that's not bad enough? Am I gay? And here it goes into this girl that she has, she's attracted to her one female friend, and, you know, she's thinking that she's gay as a result. My child, you may not see me at work in your circumstances. You may not be aware that I am there, but I am. Look with the eyes of faith, or with look with eyes of faith, and see the reality of my heavenly resources at work. Lord God Almighty. Now, when I read that, I thought to myself, well, it says 6, 617 here, and we're at 2 Kings 6, verse 17. But then I looked down at verse 17, and continues over here to the other page. You can see it up top there. And I thought to myself, well, wait a second here. This is not saying the same thing. This love note from God is not a verse of Scripture. And you know what they do in this thing? They go through and somebody writes this out, out of their own imagination, out of their own mind, and then they sign God's name to it. Let's look at a couple others quickly. Here you have one from God Almighty. How about one from your Heavenly Father? Somebody writing that. Calling themselves your Heavenly Father. Okay. Let's look at another profile. Horoscopes. Here she says, that is according to my horoscope. I check it maybe once a week. I'm a Libra. I guess is how you say that. Um, to me, horoscopes are harmless fun like the magic eight ball. Sometimes, though, my horoscope seems true. Okay, there's nothing wrong with wanting to know what's up, is there? Sometimes God seems so far away, you know. Who says God can't speak through horoscopes? I'm just keeping all my options open. Now, you might have a Christian girl that says, well, I don't even know what a horoscope is. Where would I even find one? Well, you don't have to look, worry about that because they tell you. You don't have to look very far to find a horoscope. Just check a newspaper, most teen magazines, or the web. Teen magazines? I tell kids to stay away from them. 
Like Sage, are you or your friends wondering about horoscopes? Here's some fast truth. Now what they do, of course, is they go down through and they tell you that horoscopes are wrong and they're evil and everything. But still, what's the teenager going to listen to? They will listen to what another teenager says. Okay, another profile. What do I say when my friend is gay? I told Sean that the Bible says that homosexuality is wrong. That sounded lame as soon as I said it because or as soon as I said it, especially since I couldn't think of any scriptures to use. Well, if you're using an NIV, I can tell you you aren't going to find many scriptures against sodomy uh, because most of them have been changed. He also th said that he's still a Christian. I keep reading about a gay gene that people are born gay. I'm wondering if that's true in Sean's case. Does that mean it's okay with God that he's gay? We're going to look at something a little bit more about that in a minute here. But we'll look at some more love notes. Here's one from Your God. Here's a, another profile. Shameless. Who says good girls don't show a little skin now and then? Remember, this is for 13-year-olds. Now that I've got some cleavage, I'm not ashamed to show it off. My mom needs to get a life. I'll give the guys almost anything they want. It's all a game, and for once, I'm winning. Do you ever have a teenager say something really smart, and the parent says, Where'd you learn how to talk like that? Well, now they can say, I learned how to talk like that from my Bible, from my NIV. It's incredible. Here again, you have a love note. Whether you are hurting if physically, emotionally, or mentally, reach out to me in faith. You will find healing. Jesus the healer. Well, that's a lie. Paul besought the Lord thrice to be healed. Three times he said, God, please heal me. And God said no. You see, the fact is, sometimes God will not heal you because he wants you to be sick so that you can minister to other people who have that same sickness. No, Jesus does not always heal you. Here you have a love note from Jesus. Here you have your Lord and Savior. I cannot imagine writing that with my own hand and then calling it, signing it as your Lord and Savior. Unbelievable. Okay. Here's somebody signed it, Lord Jesus. Again, intolerant about tolerance. My high school just celebrated Diversity Week. We're supposed to embrace the differences among us. Different races, religions, genders, sexual preferences, etc. I've been taught that homosexuality is wrong and that Jesus is the only way to God and stuff. Real intelligent. But am I just like some kind of bigot if I can't accept other religions? Or think that homosexuals should be straight? Oh, of course you are. You shouldn't ever do that. That's a hate crime. And again, a love note signed by Lord Jesus. You know, it says here on the back cover of this True Images Bible that there are over 100 short love notes from God. They need to realize that. Okay? You see, the old debate used to be right here between the Nestles text, the West Cotton Hort, the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus Alexandrian text, and the text from Antioch called today the Textus Receptus. That used to be the old date or debate. Now, now we come out with new Bibles that don't have manuscript support, nothing to back them up. You just say, I'm going to write this little note out of my own mind, out of my own thoughts, and then I'll sign it, your Lord and Savior, or I'll sign it, Jesus Christ, or something like that. Unreal.